everyone, welcome into your box seat, brought to you in association with Sweet Lou, who of course stands at Woodlands Start. We're off the back of the New Zealand Derby out of Addington Raceway, and what was an enormous night, Michael? Evening to you, things weren't quite perfect weather-wise, but I tell you what, the racing was still outstanding. It was, Greg, big hi to you, and I hope everybody's Wednesday's gone well. It, it was a strange night, Greg, because some things were like so easy to predict, like the Derby result, and others you thought were easy for, to predict and didn't come out the way you thought they would. And now there's been a whole lot of different narratives out of the night about horses who may not be going where we think they were going to go. Um, Ultimate Sniper, the Derby winner, has shot away for scintigraphy, which puts real doubts over his Harness Jewels campaign. And even the actual future of speeding spur in New Zealand heading forward. So, Greg, one of the reasons we raise some of these things is the jewels markets came out today. Well done, Fantastic. Well, done. well Excellent. played. And that means you can bet into a lot of the markets we're going to talk about tonight because most of the winners you're about to see are involved in those jewels. Let's get straight into it then. What's ahead for you on your show? Well, Turn It Up just keeps on lifting the bar. Of course, he took out the Easter Cup. We'll have a look at that. Ninth Group 1 for Speeding Spur. Uh, we'll talk about a horse with collecting its name and the man who's hoping he'll collect a bit more soon. Uh, the Derby Double, Trotters and Pacers. We'll look at that. Um, and Hunt Your Calm is part of that story. A few milestones and this bloke here has got a new job to do. We'll talk about that later in the show <laughs> as well. Let's get straight in to the Easter Cup, of course it was, with Brecken Farms and the All-Stars. He hadn't been seen since Cambridge back in January. He came out over two miles on a wet track and did this. Getting through, turn it up. AG's White Sox is wider out, the only danger to him on the far side. It is turn it up. AG's White Sox is running out of time. Turn it up. Turn it up has beaten AG's White Sox in the fixer. Mark Purden, we questioned you as to whether you'd be able to pull this off. You've done it. Uh, Satisfaction-wise, where does this rate? Oh, look, <laughs> full credit to the horse, really, you know, in these conditions and first up over two miles for a long time. Uh, you know, he, he tried so hard and uh, he just got there, but uh, it was very courageous. Mark, there's some people here tonight that have probably never been to the races before. Tell me the story behind this horse. How did he come to be in your care? Uh, Neil asked me to select one uh, in Melbourne uh, by Courage Under Fire, and uh, which was typical of Neil. He always liked to buy a Courage, and uh, <laughs> I selected this guy, brought him home, and uh, he was raced with Jim and Ann Gibbs uh, early on. And then, uh, yeah, when uh, Neil passed away, we, we bought the share and, and gave Lee, his brother, a, a small percentage of him. Yeah, I'm sure Neil's watching down proud as punch, Mark. What about when you made the call to, to make this plan into the Easter Cup? When was that? Look, it wasn't really a plan, but he, he trialled so well the other, um, about 10 days ago that I, I thought he was up to it, But uh, and his work's been good since that trial, so yeah, it was really the trial that convinced me that he's probably up to having a run in it. Mark, you've spent plenty of time away over the last couple of months, uh, plenty of credit must go to your staff at home. Oh, absolutely, you know, we've got a great team at home, and uh, led, led by Hayden, uh, Hayden now, and uh, he's done a great job and with all the team under him. Well done, Mark. Thanks, Matt. It wasn't that long ago, Michael Guerin, you had to win 10 races to get into this race. He was only having start number 11. Um, his uh, future, well, it's just untapped, isn't it, really? And for him, he's very lucky that he comes into the open grade, you know, more or less next season is going to be his big season there with an Inter-Dominion at home. So he will have, going to the back end of November, New Zealand Cup, Inter-Dominions and an Auckland Cup, racing for a lot of money. Uh, without having to leave the country. Of course, he hasn't left the country yet, so I don't think he'll need to go to Australia until at least a Hunter Cup or Miracle Mile, all things being well. Can't remember this many times. I think Mimu Chacha won an Auckland Cup uh, off the back of a very limited preparation, something like this. And occasionally you see a horse like, I think, Armalite won a New Zealand Cup after only having one start for the campaign, but a three-month break, and it wasn't just a break from racing, he had a genuine spell during that time, and winning a two-mile good race in the slush, Greg, is rare. I don't think that was the best version of him. I think he was getting tired near the line because he can't have been absolutely screwed down, which raises the question, how much better can he be? There's a lot in front of him. I think he could be termed the best horse in the country. I don't think that's definitive in that regard because both Spankham and the Fixer had harder runs, but at the moment he needs or deserves to be favourite for everything he's nominated for. 
The question now is, OK, he's going to Auckland, Taylor Mile messenger, then a decision has to be made. Do you carry on for another month and go to the duels, or is it time to put him aside, given what he's got at the back end of the year? Well, that's really interesting, and we've got a market for this. These markets came out today. Um, the reason it's interesting is, one thing about the All-Stars, which can be frustrating for futures punters, but one of the reasons they're so good at what they do is they change their minds all the time. This horse wasn't racing in the Easter Cup two weeks ago. Had there been a futures market for the Easter Cup, you would have backed something else, and he would have come in and beat you, and you'd be furious. So I think they're now starting to think that this is the horse who's favourite to win the big races. Auckland Cup, Inter Dominions, and New Zealand Cup, of course, being the first of them. Do they want to go to June 1st with him? I hope he turns up. When I spoke to Mark two weeks ago, he indicated they would go to the duels. But they've also got Spankham. They've got Chase Auckland, who hasn't got any money yet to get into the duels. And they've got Ashley Lopez. So it would be easy enough for them, far easier than other trainers, Greg, to drop him out of the duels. Now, he's 2.5 for the duels. I can't be taking that until he gets through Auckland and they make a decision. So here's that market. Now, when I spoke to Mark two weeks ago, he said, turn it up, we'll go, spank and won't go to the jewels. I spoke to Natalie this week, yeah. and she indicated <coughs> to me that maybe turn it up wouldn't go to the jewels. Exactly. So, and, yeah. and, and when you look at this market, obviously very, very strong. It's the strongest of the races every jewels. Now, actually, low cares will be back this week and he'll probably be set for this because it's a natural aim for him. The horse who isn't on this page or the next page is Chase Auckland. Now, he'll need about between forty and 50000 to get in. Now, he's got none. He's got nothing at all at the moment because he hasn't raced in New Zealand. So he's going to need to win a race or get a couple of really serious So ring your classic for him, Taylor Which would be worth about 30, 13000 to the winner, maybe yep. fifteen. He would still need to run second in both those races in Auckland to get in. or win yep. one of them. So that's a really interesting market. Um, I, I, I couldn't bet into that because I've turned it up starts. Turns up. Yeah. He probably would. Mm. But if he doesn't turn up, which wouldn't surprise me, then you could do your money cold. Yeah. OK. Well, let's have a look at the start. The, his manners are beautiful. And, and OK, he's already an Auckland Cup winner, but uh, he stepped away really nicely here. There is a slight bound and then straight into it. AG's White Sox was slowly away and um, his defence was outstanding uh, from last year's win into this. And um, really frank that his two mile form is, is quite exceptional. Um, he got close and the flat tyre the week before, I think that was a clear indication that it definitely affected him. Yeah, and he's heading forward to the Rangiura Classic this week, so that's a really strong version of the Rangiura Classic. I thought he was going to win here, AG's White Sox, but turn it up had such an easy run. He almost had to win in saying that you can see the fact that he's not screwed down. I think he would have won by two had he been the fittest version of himself. There were some good runs by a couple of four-year-olds hitting the line strongly. One being Hale Christian, the other being Alta Maestro, who was wide out on the yep. track and missed away. So there was there was plenty of merit in, in both of their efforts. Um, outside of that, Henry Hubert, he's stepping up, isn't he? He still needs to get his manners things right. But yep. um, I, I thought there was enough in the four-year-olds to suggest they are genuine New Zealand Cup horses heading forward, uh, with a few more up north to join them. And then obviously the fix and the established stars. Spankham, willing to forgive, had no chance of winning a long way from home. He just had to move last of the bunch, which meant he was going to be parked, put him in a different position, and the fixes last of the bunch and goes round. He gets the 1-1, he probably runs third. So I thought a really good race. If you took that field and maybe trimmed a couple off and added Tiger Tara and Chicago Bull, who may well come for the Cup in November, Greg, that would be a very, very good New Zealand Cup field. Yeah, exactly, especially if you chuck in Ashley Lopez, Chase Auckland, yep. maybe on the cards, those type of horses. Yep. There's a bit of depth there at the moment, which is great. Uh, we've got a mixture of trainer and drivers amongst those that were beaten behind Turn It Up. He showed his best tonight. Yeah, no, he um, can go a good two mile if he gets the right run and he's got good speed at the finish. And, you know, but unfortunately, just back a fraction too far on the bend, that probably cost him winning. Second run back in NZ, Nat, what did you make of it? I thought he went great, you know, he didn't made up a lot of ground, he was a long way back. Um, his run was super, just, just probably told out the last 50, but he tried hard, he went great. Henry Hubert leading the charge, G's taking the step up. Yeah, he has really, but tonight, uh, Johnny just said he didn't settle what's in the front, and that was a disappointing part about it, and that's why he sort of probably didn't go just quite as good as we might have thought. But uh, overall, you know, he stepped away good, and he has taken a step up, as you said, right through the season. 
of the others? What were the reports? Uh, ultra, ultra uh, Orlando, just a disappointing, so we'll try and freshen up and get him ready for later in the season. Of course, let's spend a night here, Mr. Way, but the other horse was unbelievably stiff, really, and uh, if you watch his video, he got on you know, really um, strongly at the finish, and Gav said, uh, with Ultra Maestro, he had have, um, gone around the front, which, you know, he was tossing and turning, but he didn't want to be parked, and um, that cost him really get, having a good chance to be right in the finish. A few questions answered there. That's right, mate. He, he raced super, and it's just a shame we got shuffled right back, um, just like we normally do. But um, hopefully, we can change things um, next time around. Harness jewels, bit of money in the bank. Are you, are you about at that point yet? Oh yeah. You know, I'm not really too worried about it. If we get there, we get there. Um, I think the big target after the four-year race is actually give him a wee bit of a breather and, and really focus on the NZ Cup. And I actually think we're a genuine chance. I'm actually not scared of anything, and. Um, Especially on that run tonight, that's pretty much the cup field and I was just absolutely stoked with the way he's gone. Tim Spankham, uh, brave effort. Yeah, look, it was Matty, obviously. Um, we've got a nice card up, but you know, getting left out, sort of parked that far from home, it was uh, it was never going to be easy. But you know, he stuck to it really well, probably just the last hundred he's come to the end of it. But um, you like to say, he's probably entitled to. 3.58 on that track, and, and we need to talk a little bit about the track. The first race that couldn't have the mobile, I've never known that at Addington Raceway before. Uh, luckily for the remainder of the program, that wasn't an issue, but gee, we had a lot of rain. I don't think anyone was to blame, it's just the track was very, very wet. I've spoken to a couple of trainers and drivers about this, and I, I don't know enough about it. I, I don't go to Addington enough to know. But in the old days, like most of the all-weather tracks, it tended to be shell, and therefore the rain just drips off it, and people tend to like that. But the sand, a lot more sand. is yeah. softer and obviously a lot faster. Around cup time it's quite sandy and it gets really quick. So you know more about this track than I do. Mm. Is it sandier than it used to be? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Because when you have, anybody who's been to the beach will know this, when you have sand and it gets wet, yep. it gets quite gluggy and gluey. And the so water that, that, can that, sit on top of it. That would seem yeah. to be the issue? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, so but the, again, we had 30 mils of rain oh, yeah, Michael, I, I, in a really well, congested period. Much, you've got to have a bad track once in a while, yep. and I can see the sand part of it, but yeah, I, I can see the argument both ways. Sand is a great surface to race on mm. when it's dry, when it's wet, not so good, and it's rare that it gets that wet, but yeah, the mobile not being used in the first... I'll be honest with you, what I did. I had a bet on Thursday, I think it was, an all-up bet, and once I saw the first race, I used the new TRB app and I traded out of it hmm. because I thought, I don't want to be betting on a track that's wet. It was lost. it the right thing to do? It lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's the right and, thing and to do? And you know what? I'm absolutely convinced, 100%, it lost because of the track. It was, I'll tell you what it was, it was a multi-bit. I had Enhancer Carmen to Ultimate Sniper. I thought they'll both lead and they'll both win. I thought I'll take the easy money. Both lead? Dollar ninety, and, and I still think Enhancer Carmen, we'll see shortly, probably got beat because of his lack of fitness on, on that a wet track. track. So that's one of the great things about the new website is you can trade out of your bets with a recordant. Well done to I'm you. I'm not even sure accordance of word. No, I'm but it was not. Nice. I like the, like the set. Well, let's get into the Fred Shaw Memorial New Zealand Trotting Championship because... This horse was outstanding again, gate speed, they put the hood on, he led, he went into a, an awesome battle with uh, Sunday's son, who's trotting far better than what he was probably six months ago. He's right amongst it in the open class ranks now, but Speeding Spur made it Group 1 win, number 9. Landing and Destiny Jones, Speeding Spur, Sunday Sun, one last crack, Speeding Spur, Sunday Sun, galloped and Speeding Spur won it. Speeding Spur won a titanic two-way battle over Sunday Sun and King's Landing. Tell you what, Josh Dickey, if you ever went to war, this is one bloke you'd love to have by your side, isn't it? Oh, 100%, Matt. Um, you know, the horse's uh, courage is unbelievable, really, and uh, he's given, given us a great ride. Uh, my nana passed away a couple of weeks ago, and she just absolutely admired this horse, and um, it's just all credit to my nana, really, mate. Yeah, fantastic, Josh. What about coming into the race? You, you've blown the gate. Was it a case of showing everyone how good he is? Pretty much, mate. We've we've had a bit of an up and down campaign um, since winning the free for all out here, and I was really wrapped with his run the other night. We we're quite happy just to pull him back and and let him run home. And you know, tonight we just sort of wanted to lead up and just run, dictate how he likes to. And and um, you know, Dad and I had confidence in this horse, and and. Um, yeah, he's backed that up tonight. What does the future hold? Uh, I'm not sure. He, he's he's going to get home now, and um, there's talks of um, maybe sending him overseas, but we'll, we'll just let that, the owners decide what's happening. Embrace it, Josh. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers, mate.
Oh, he's just a brilliant horse. Loves Eddington Raceway. Of course, won the free-for-all on Cup Day. Wasn't as potent in the Dominion, but lovely to see him back doing that. And, and you could see what it meant to Josh. I, I keep waiting for him to not be a good horse anymore, and he keeps being a good horse. Um, I was actually, my apologies, supposed to mention a couple of weeks ago that, that Josh had lost his, his, his nana and John's mum, of course. And um, she passed away a couple of weeks ago, and, and she was a huge part of the family dynasty because the Dickies are a, a trotting dynasty. She was... Um, lucky enough, I suppose, to, to own a New Zealand free for all winner, which was one of John's first big tra day. training and driving successes. Mm. Believe it or not, it's hard to believe John used to drive because Josh has been doing it for so long. But yeah, they, they were um, they, you know, a, a very, very much a family unit. So uh, our belayed condolences to that. Um, with the horse, I can't believe he keeps coming back, Greg. Like he's had a couple of leg injuries. He, he had a bleed um, when he was in Australia, which I'm not sure. I, th I think it was officially a bleed. It might have just been a little bit of a dust in the lungs incident, but he's now won two Group 1s this season, and, and I, I would have thought this was absolutely no chance of being a realistic comment to make three months ago. But if he wins one of the next Group 1s, the Anzac Cup or the Road Cup, he, does he maybe get trot of the year over Mark Cooler? Now, the day Mark Cooler won the Dominion, you go, well, he can't. Let's end of that. Yep. And he won the Lyle Creek, but he's been beaten in the National Trot. Unless he, he wins one of the next two, he consolidates it, Mark Cooler. If he doesn't win one of the next two and Speeding Spur does, that's three Group 1s for the season. And Group 1 voting is enormous in the horse of the year. So, look, he's a wonderful old horse. There's some talk he might head to America, which would suggest that would be to race on Lexus because of a bleed, Greg. I, I don't want to see him go to America. No, I don't want to see I, that I, either. I, I, and I'm pretty sure, judging by Josh's reaction, he doesn't want to either. And, and, and I respect the fact when owners have a horse, it's their right to do what they want. And also, he's a syndicate horse, so it's hard to stand him at stud unless you buy some people out of the other part of the syndicate. So it's far trickier with the, that than just a stallion deal. And I realise I've got other stallions, two trotting stallions, at least two, at Woodlands. But... I reckon in the right place in Australasia you could probably get 100 mares at two and a half and give them a chance. I don't want to see him go to America unless he's guaranteed to come back. That's my opinion. I don't own the horse. He's not mine to be divvying up. Let's uh, hear from a couple of those beaten and then talk more about the likes of Mark Hawler. G tried tonight. Yeah, he didn't. I've never seen Johnny more disappointed, Matt, after he's come back from a drive ever really because he thought he should have won it. He just got a little bit keen when Nat came three wide down the back and tried to go around Winterfell and he went with her and he got real keen and he said he let him stride when he probably should have just taken a bigger hold on him. It's easy after, of course, as we all know, but he, he was just um, courageous is one thing and he just got tired of the last few strides in Gallup, which he's still prone to do, but to, to his credit, he's getting better all the time and it was. It was a, a run that probably deserved nearly to win the race. What's been the turn for him? At what point did he just click? Putting two boring poles on him, to tell you the truth. Um, Johnny's always wanted to do it. He's always uh, gets in the turns enough to have a pole and gets out in the straights enough to break. So uh, it was one of those things, two poles might have fixed them, might not have, and it has worked. And now he's solid, he's got his confidence up, and I think he'll just go on for better and bigger things from now on. Well, they're only start number nine, Mark. He's held his own. Yes, he's gone terrific, really, Matt. And uh, we just put him in there to give us a guide, just sort of where he is, where he's at. And uh, no, he didn't let us down. He, he, he did us proud. OK, so for him, Harness Jules now? Yes, yeah, he'll have a lead-up one or two before then, but uh, Harness Jules will be his main aim. Destiny Jones, nice to see her backing up from her placing the week before. Uh, Mark Cooler, we've got to talk about him. He, he got into the wrong position, got behind Winterfell, who galloped in front of him, and the other two got away. But was it a pass, Mark, for you? No, and it wasn't for the punters. I had a good talk to Clint last night. He said, look, maybe could have driven it differently, but more importantly probably needed a run. Like, like Turn It Up, he probably wasn't at his peak and Turn It Up got the right run to get away with it. Mark Cooler didn't after similar preps, you know, a couple of trials, but no no racing. He's going to Rangiura on Sunday to take on Mon Bay. So the last time we saw those two race each other was in the free-for-all, the national record free-for-all. What was that, 2016? Yeah, two and a half mm. years ago, a long time ago. Um, yeah, oh, oh, past Mark for sure, if he can go improve on it. Yep. So, but at the moment, no, not for the punters last week. So if it's an improvement curve thing, he thought he didn't handle the track. He said he's handled the wet in the past. Rangiro is going to be interesting because if he underperforms there, and I don't think he will, I actually think he'll come out and win this week. 
But if he underperforms there, then you start going, well, do we go to Auckland? Do we not go to Auckland? I think both him and Mon Bay are in a situation this week where Sunday could determine their immediate futures and, to be honest, the rest of their season. What about Temporale? Just give us a quick update on yes, him. So Temporale had an atrial fibrillation at the trials at uh, Pukekohe on Saturday. Um, often with these things, they drop straight back. The heart. It's basically the heart gets out of rhythm, and you can look like thumps. And the heart often goes straight back into rhythm, and you're fine. By Monday, he hadn't come back into rhythm, speaking to Tony Hurley. So they had to take him to the vets, and they give them some drugs to help you know, put the heart back into rhythm. The problem's twofold for him. He was supposed to race this Friday against Massive Metro in Le Mans. He can't race there. Secondly, he didn't have a trial because he pulled up to a walk during that workout. So now he's got to go into the Anzac Cup if he gets there in a race he almost certainly can't win, as a lead-up to the Road Cup, the race he won two years ago. So there's some real problems there for Temporale. It's been a roller coaster season for him, and he's now having a down on that roller coaster at the worst possible time. That's the feature trot of the night and an update there. Whilst this race wasn't a group race on the night, it certainly capped off uh, an outstanding night at Addington Raceway. Have a bow peep at this horse, popping out of the trail just start number three, and he did this. Collect went bang and put four lengths on Enchante getting to second, then flying Mr Ideal. They talk the talk, the Southerners. Now you know why. You may collect. Wow! You may collect beat on Shantae. So that might have been the last race on the program at Addington Friday night, but how enjoyable was that, Michael Guerin? Uh, often we hope a horse with the hype that he had from his two previous starts can turn up in Addington and do that, and he did not let us down. And, and Southland is such a huge part of New Zealand harness racing and has such a proud tradition. It's the home of Cardigan Bay, of course that you want them to have another good horse, and it's really hard to train good Addington, Alexandra Park competitive horses from Southland. So um, it's going to be really interesting to see what they plan to do with this horse, not so much this season, because he's probably close to finishing the season, Greg. What's on the table for next season? Well, we're lucky enough to be uh, joined by the man who purchases him out of the Wingling sale and races him, Tom Kilkelly. Uh, Tom, have you stopped smiling yet? No, it's just uh, an unbelievable sensation to uh, think that uh, six weeks ago today we took this horse to a qualifying trial with the hope of qualifying it and this morning he's paying $21 on the fixed odds for the New Zealand Cup. I'm not saying we're going to get there but what an unbelievable journey in six weeks. Tell me about the issues you've had with him. OK, so first of all, why did you buy him at the weanling sale? What appealed to you? Well, um, I picked a few out in the book and unfortunately I couldn't get to the sales early enough. Uh, we were going up, I think it was before the duel, so we, Julie and I went up later in the day. And so I got a friend of mine, Paul Bealby and Dave Shadbolt, checked the horses that I'd packed um, and uh, they checked them all out for me and when we got there we bid on them. Well, actually, they, they bought one. I'm not sure whether it was him or not. And said, well, if you don't want it, we'll take it. But I think it was one of the other ones. So, yes, we got him there and, um, yeah. He impressed you from day one, dollars. but you had yeah, not, not a not a uh, uh, a big purchase by any stretch. But you've had your issues with him a couple of times. Uh, he has broken down on you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a three-year-old, we got him up and going, and he obviously showed a fair bit. One of the guys that was working for me had a friend in Sydney. We went to a workout, and uh, he came back and he said to me, "Would you sell the horse?" And I said, "Oh, not really. It's a bit early yet." And we went to a workout, and he said, "Look," he said, um, "I can get you fifty thousand for him off a workout." And I said, "Oh, sure." And uh, so we basically had him sold the very next day. He popped a tender now, so you know the sale was off. Um, so we've got a hill block out at the place at Riverton we've got. So we put him out on there for a year, brought him back in, didn't get him scanned, just worked him up again, and it went again on the same leg. So uh, then he was four, obviously, so we now brought him back at five. I had him scanned. They said, no, he's not right. So we turned him out again for another two or three months. And uh, this time, they bet said, yeah, hey, it's good to go. So she suggested that we walked him for a month. Um, so we just walked him for a month. Um, I tried doing it just off the lead, but that got a bit heavy going. So I put him on the frame and walked him. And then he went out to um, the beach where Tank and Kirsten look after him out there. Now, you've had a pretty successful training career in your own right. I think 85, maybe 90 winners. Uh, Kirsten Barclay drove many of those for you, so great to have her associated with this horse. And the wry smile from her about 20 metres off the post was quite noticeable. Yeah. I mean, I do, she still 
uh, buzzing over the whole thing. And, and the good thing about harness racing in general, especially down here, is that everyone is so pleased for you. I mean, it's not just uh, you know one or two think it's all right. Everybody that you speak to is just unbelievably happy that we've got a good horse. Tom, talking about um, the remainder of the season, I believe you've got one more race lined up for him. But next season, things get serious. If he holds together, and we all hope he does, would you aim him at a New Zealand Cup? And if you did so, would you leave him in Southland to do that? Uh, would you send him to somewhere else? Or would, in fact, one of the trainers maybe head up to Canterbury and train him out of there for the last month, if all things go well? At this stage, I've said there's three things that are guaranteed. One, the horse is not for sale. Two, he stays on the beach. And three, Kirsten Barker, there's any person driving it. So, so, Tom, in that situation, could you train him off the beach? For example, we use the New Zealand Cup, or it doesn't matter if it's a Kaika or a Cup or the Ashburton Flying Stakes, whatever you guys choose to go to. Could you train him out of Southland for that with all the travelling backwards or forwards, or would you say to Kirsten, look, there's a beach up there at Wood End, maybe you go park yourself up there for a month type thing? No, we're pretty adamant that we will train him from here. The road between Invercargill and Christchurch is tar sealed now, so it is a good road. Um, and uh, he just went up there the other day, and he, when he got there, he just went straight in the paddock and ate. When he got home, he went straight in the paddock and ate up, so it hasn't worried him. I mean, obviously, you've got to look at going forward. I mean, if there is an issue, we may have to change the things, but that is our plan at the moment. He's a very humorous man. It's tar sealed now. That's, I that's brilliant, that, Tom. Tom. I, like, I like that. Well, that's handy if you're a car dealer, Tom. <laughs> hey, uh, is the New Zealand Cup something which you're hoping you'll sit down with and you guys will try and work backwards for a plan to get to? Or is is that a little bit too presumptuous at this stage? Well, it all depends on the horse between now and then. But their plan at this stage is a, um, a race from a rating 70 on Diamonds Day at Invercargill at the end of this month. And then a fortnight after that, there's a uh, rating 80 mile at Winton, and that'll be his last two starts for the season. And our plan is that we turn him out early enough, we can bring him back early enough, and hopefully to get him to Cup Week, whether that be the Cup or whether it be a supporting race. Yeah, he's certainly in his infancy with regard to the number of starts he's had and between now and Cup time, uh, we wish you all the very best. Uh, congratulations on what he's achieved so far, Tom, and thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we love seeing him at Addington on Friday night and he's got a huge fan base now, I can promise you that. Thanks very much, Greg. Excellent. Um, I tell you what's, what's advantageous for that horse is you mentioned it earlier with Turn It Up. Back in the day, in the old days, he would have needed 10 wins to get into the New Zealand Cup and, and it would be extremely hard to get 10 wins between now and November. Even two more this season, Pigeon on five. Would you get five early in the season? Almost impossible to do. But he doesn't need to. He can get, he can get in as a rating 95 horse. This year, they were taking anything for the Cup. So yeah. he, he gets it to a rating 95. He's guaranteed a start to get in. So. What about the horses he's beaten? The Hokar Achilles has gone on and won the bullpens 1-2. And the horse he beat on Chante is Group 1 place. So, and the time he went the other night, mm. he went 2.22, Michael, on a wet track. It, it's funny, Greg. I, I never pay attention to that sort of stuff. I know you've got some of that information coming through you today. I, I look at horses and they look like good horses or they don't. Yeah. And he just looks like a good horse. He's incredibly similar in build and ability and pacing style. To his dad, I know you're going to say that. Christian Cullen was a totally different type of horse. He had quite a straight leg at the front. He didn't have the big high knee lift. But his dad, um, got to go collect, who was a wonderful horse. Only had nine starts. And I saw a lot of him race when he was young. Gee, he was a good horse. And he was always going to leave a good horse, and this is the best of the ones he's left. Very similar horse, not big, robust type horses, very you know, very um, efficient in their gait. I hope he holds together. Greg, I want Southland to have a good horse. I mean, Franco Ledger did the job for a long time, Howard Bromack. But in our generation, there haven't been that many open-class horses come out of Southland because it's so hard to do, and the temptation to sell is so big. Um, um, some great things out of that, though. No sale, <laughs> staying with the same trainers, and definitely Kirsten will and be I, driving I've, it, and that's great. I was only asking those questions because so many horses do yep. move on, like, like the Amy Maguire's from slightly further up the island. They, they do have to go somewhere else. I'm glad it's staying there. I, I'm happy for them. I would love to see Southland have a really good horse. And if he doesn't win a New Zealand Cup, because not many horses do, and if he wins an Invercargill Cup next year, that'll be a hell of a big moment for them. But it's an intriguing, interesting 
different story yeah. in harness racing, and we're looking forward to seeing how it unfolds. The rating 70 on Diamonds Day. Hmm. Hmm. I'm picking he might start pretty short. Yeah, I'm picking he will too. Short break for us. When we come back, we've got to wrap up some more action out of Addington Raceway. This was the third time Diamond Creek Farm out of the state sponsored the New Zealand Pacing Derby. We had a white-hot favourite find the lead and did this to them. And the first female driver to drive the winner of the derby, of course, Natalie Rasmussen. Of the length and a half over Supreme Dominator and Ultimate Sniper will win it. Beat Supreme Dominator Jesse Duke and Global Domination. Then Heisenberg Double Rocket. So he's eight from ten now, and he's completed the big four, Michael. The size, the sales series, and both derbies, like Alva Colo, like Courage Under Fire, like Have Faith in Me, and like Lazarus. That puts him in a pretty rarefied air. It does, and the question is, will he complete number five, the Harness Jewels, which wasn't around for some of those horses, of course. Uh, he's gone from there, where he won pretty easily, Greg, with a few little niggly, hitchy little things about him, so they're concerned there might be a niggle somewhere, in a joint or in his back, or who knows. So he's gone to Matamata for scintigraphy, where they run the dye through the body, big X-ray machine, and they scan it and see if there's any areas of heat. That would suggest to me they are quite concerned. It's a long way from Christchurch to Matamata. So if they're doing that, and I think if they find a niggle somewhere they don't like the sound of, because he's got nothing else between there and the jewels, there's no race of any importance, they'll pull the plug. Yep. Now, I'm not saying that will happen, but the market is open for the jewel, so I want to be as honest with you as possible. I would say he's 50-50 at best. I have no inside knowledge to that, but he's such a good horse, Greg, and they had so many problems later in life with brother Ultimate Machete that I wouldn't be stunned if he didn't turn up on Jewel's Day. If he does, he's probably going to win. Um, we see him run to the front in the middle stages here, but I still think he's a year away from being the finished product, Greg. Good performances here from Supreme Dominator, who we've just heard this week is no longer in the Harness Jewels. Uh, heading, very unusual, he's been withdrawn from the Harness Jewels because he's heading to Melbourne, but bizarrely, he could actually get the Australian invite. Right. So, I wouldn't scratch him out of your thoughts right now, and Jesse Duke was fine, he, he, he was what he was going to be from the second line, which was sitting parked, and OK, Global Domination was really Ran good. Ran on good. Robin's Playboy actually sat parked early on, yep. battled away up the straight, so it was a good performance there, there from the Ross Wilson There were lots of nice horses runner. in this race, but there's one horse who's a genuinely this good open class horse. Yep. As I said, I, I would be very reluctant to bet into this market, and unless you want to roll the dice and bet against him, because, I don't know, I, I just think he's half a chance of not turning up. They've got so many good horses, the All-Stars, and they've got another masterpiece to come back. They don't need to race him in the in the duels because if he goes to the paddock now, he's in the paddock for two more months. To keep him up for the duels, you're keeping him up for one more race because there's nothing else group. So that's one derby down. Let's move on to the Inkwise New Zealand Trotters derby. Of course, uh, we had a hot favourite, a horse that was unbeaten going into it and enhanced your calm. He was in front, had every opportunity, but have a look at the horse peeling from three back on the fence. His ears are already back now and he just wanted it more than the leader hard but it's enhanced your calm in front a lot of muscle is zipping it after the leader enhance your calm a lot of muscle comes here's the post well well you won't be calm if you're on enhance your calm because a lot of muscle has got very very close he is simply a master isn't he oh yeah he's unreal isn't he but um oh so is the horse he's a wee beardy too so good on him what were you thinking coming up behind the gate? Obviously, Enhance Your Calm was in their short price favourite. Did you always have the confidence? Um, I never thought I'd beat him, to be honest. Well done, Bob. Good on you guys. Um, but, um, you know, he stuck his ears back, and he's actually, I've probably driven him wrong most of his starts, and um, twice I've driven him with a sit, and he's just unleashed on them, yeah. OK, another generation of your family to pick up a trotting derby, so that lives on. Uh, this horse onto the harness, Jules. You'd be a serious contender there. 
Yeah, well, he's beaten them all tonight, so um, hopefully he can do it again. <laughs> what about the group of owners, Marty Smith and his crew up there? They'll be loving this. Oh, yeah, great owners and um, great mates and um, good supporters of mine. So um, oh, I'm wrapped, yeah. Wrapped. Congratulations, Bob. Thanks, mate. And there is Marty Smith. Uh, Smith, this is a, a wonderful story. His father, Vic, owned the winner in 1972, which was driven by Wes Butt, Bob's great-grandfather, and trained by his other great-grandfather in Jack Linton. Now, Wes drove three winners of the race. Of course, Bob's father, David's driven three winners of the race. And Paul Nairn, well, we know what a master trainer of trotters, enthusiast. And they're related also. They're all, yeah. all related. Uh, Shirley Temple, who he won with in 2007, and, of course, Above the Stars too. So oh, what, what, what a list that is. It just goes to show you, and we mentioned the Dickies earlier, those people who can train trotters, and also you need to love them, so that love comes into the equation of the patients. Often it's a gift handed down, the patience and the shoeing and even the gearing up of them. We all know how good Paul is, I'm not going to waste my time telling you how good he is, he's just a superb trainer. This horse isn't as good as Enhanced Your Car, but he's damn good. He's probably going to be an open class horse, he might be a little bit small to be a good open class horse, but there's some smaller ones who've done it in the past. Uh, he's got speed. Good on you Bob, I'm happy for Bob. I think it's nonsense that Bob, did he get suspended or fined? Uh, for excessive use of the whip. I think he may have got suspended. Well, but but yeah. He wasn't hitting that horse hard, he wasn't doing anything wrong, he was doing what he needed to do to win the race and get the best out of the horse. There were little love taps on the inside and a couple on the other side. Well he said to me about the 100 metre mark, he thought oh I'm going to run second here, I'm getting home good and then all of a sudden the horse just took off and really wanted to win. That's, that's, what the, that, that's not what that rule's for. No. It's, it's a misuse of that rule in my belief. I understand rules and rules and we're not going to bore you with that rubbish but it shouldn't happen. Not in a group one when you're trying to do the right thing. And Hartshire Calm's interesting. I'm sure he's the best at this crop by a long way. I just think the wet maybe dulled him, second up, working hard over 2,600 metres, but at least there's that ray of light now for people who have three-year-olds, like a lot of muscle, like, OK, he's not unbeatable. So I think he'll still probably win the trots at Auckland, but, yeah, it showed that he can be... Beaten. And he'll obviously be going there, a lot of muscle, but let's hear from uh, those just beaten behind. Mark and Hans, you come. Talk me through what you thought. Uh, well, he, he was travelling good, turning in and pulled the plugs, and he probably got a little bit of a break on them. But uh, you know, halfway down, he, he sort of couldn't do any better anyway. But that horse just had the last run at him and, and got him on the line. Okay, so your pathway to the Harness Jewels is that still intact? You feel? Oh uh, yes, yeah. He'll probably go north for the Northern Derby and the size stakes up there, and then back here for the Jewels. Well, Josh, tricky Rick drew barrier two. What did you make of the result? Oh, it was a great run, Matt. Um, you know, the first two were very good. I, I made a little bit of ground up the up the lane, but um, you know, I'm pretty proud of this horse. He's come a long way, and um, the trip down here is going to make him. Um, you know, they've got to come up and race him in his own backyard now, which you know he gets around Auckland way pretty good. And um, you know, his manners are impeccable. So you know, all things equal, I, I think he'd be a good chance in these next two races. Okay, fair to say we haven't seen the best of him yet, then. Oh, probably, yeah. <laughs> He is going as good as what he can, you know, but um, he's not far away. A lot of muscle was very good tonight with a great sit, and Mark Purden's horse is pretty sharp. But, you know, the rest of them are sort of wee way behind, I suppose, and, um, you know, it'll be interesting to race them at Auckland and see how we go. And Paul Nairn, of course, trained and drove Gil Favour into fourth position as well, so a very good result for him. But a lot of muscle, we had a lot of love. She won the size, she beating was, Stent. She was a good horse. Yeah. Um, what about the, nine races? The Smith breed's a really good breed. It'd be interesting to see how many of those three-year-olds roll the dice to come north because the sire stakes is on the first night of the carnival and the, the derby's 100k. And you think, oh, well, of course they'll go, but do they think they can really beat those first two horses, particularly in Hancho Car? So if they don't think they can beat them, Greg, and the jewels are closer to home, if you had a horse who ran fifth or sixth or seventh there, would you go? It's tempting to go. Like Paul Ian will go because Paul will bring a team up for the Road Cup and therefore he'll bring, I would suggest, probably both the three year olds and a Bibti uh, Inters back this week as well. So that might go to the Road Cup Carnival. But some of those really good horses back in the field get lucky and, and, and full noise. They're going to Winton this week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're starting to wonder, well, would they be coming up? I, I hope they do. I but it's. <laughs> It's not an easy exercise to get to Auckland. The money you've got to spend, and then you've Take got to race those same horses. I tell you, it wasn't the worst in that. The grey mare was running on again, overzealous. overzealous. So it was pretty cool. If she can make her way to the harness, Jewel, she'll have a huge following. I have no doubt about that. Let's go to the welcome stakes. This for the two-year-olds. It's been dominated by uh, the All-Stars. Well, 
The leader was there to be shot down. He got a bit of pressure trying to hold the lead early on, Michael. Uh, mighty flying, uh, flying even better, rather. Uh, but this horse is unbeaten now, one change, bang, straight over the top, two for two. Yeah, it, it, he was really good, and I think the leader, often as juveniles will do, sometimes they wait for other horses because they're not sure what to do, but you can't take anything away from the winner. As you said, two from two, and both times, he's had to be really good to win. So you start to say to yourself, is he the second best two-year-old in the country? I don't know the answer to that, I suppose, over the next six weeks, we're going to find out. Natalie's third win of the race, she'd won it with Alter Orlando and pacing Major at one one thousandth of a second. I can't remember a weekend in racing, and that's in both codes, where I've seen more nose decisions or really close decisions. Like this one, the, the other, the Trotting Derby, obviously. Even the Easter Cup was closer than I thought it was going to be at the top of the straight. So, And there was a lot of them in the Galloping Code too. It was just one of those, and, and at Alexandra Park on Friday night, one of those really unusual weekends where horses were getting nosed out and the commentators were earning their money. There was a couple of uh, good races on the undercard, the first being this one, Gran Chico. Uh, he missed out on a start in the Derby, but uh, he's progressing nicely, isn't he? The Nigel McGrath, Blair Orange uh, combination here. Yeah, he looks like a seven to eight win horse pretty easily he's got naturally high speed i don't think that track actually suited him to be honest i think he just did it on natural ability yeah missing out on the derby's half a pain but the way the race was run if you weren't in the first three coming around the bend you wouldn't have got any money anyway so i can see both ends of the equation to be perfectly honest they probably made more money where they were the undercard trot on uh, the card which was race number eight uh, saw this horse in front globe Trekker, who's a pretty smart type. We'll look at the horse in the predominantly yellow colours of Mike Stevens. Here is Robert Anderson. Now, he doesn't win too many races at Addington these days, and this horse, the mare by Monarchy, uh, had never won on an all-weather track. Slightly different all-weather track, but that was one of the feel-good wins of the night too. Yeah, that's cool. I always think, of, whenever I hear Robert Anderson's name, I think of Westport. I know he doesn't live in Westport, but that's where I back him. I back him when he takes his trotters to Westport. He's had some lovely ones over the years. So good on him. It's fantastic to see you know, people from slightly smaller stables getting these sort of wins. The pick six punters probably don't. Probably didn't like punters. it, but uh, race in the estate, of course, of uh, Glenis and, and uh, race by Mike Stevens. So um, pretty cool moment there. Talking about close finishes, this was extremely close. Let's hear what Mark Mack had to say about it. Standing is coming at it, and then came Franco Nevin. Art Standing's gone to the lead. Franco Nevin's whipping up the inside. Here's the post. Baby Laz, Art Standing just wanted a nose over Franco Niven and Zinni Mark. So, Mark Mack felt that Baby Laz, as he called him, Art Standing had got there. but Franco, Lazarus was his younger brother. That's right, yeah. and Franco Niven had charged late. Well, as the judge's call came through, it told us that Franco Niven had got there. So this is what happened at Smoko at Nigel McGrath's on Monday. Baby Laz! What are you going to do? That's right, we've come to celebrate the win of Baby Laz. Go Baby Yeah. What a great win it was. What are you going to say to Nigel, come to Smoko 4? Go Baby Laz! Go Baby Laz! Got second, didn't it? We all knew Baby Laz got second, apart from Daddy. Thank you. Good, good job. So that's Mark and Katie's daughter, Bronte, bringing over Smoko. Mark lives next door to Nigel McGrath no. as an apology for calling the horse home uh, first one, and so, indeed was second. Um, is Bronte taller than Mark or not? It's hard to tell. <laughs> well, it was hard, hard to, to tell off that, that camera. <laughs> it's actually a good honour, Pee, with the, the, the good humour to do it, Mark, because he would hate making a mistake like that. Oh, but it's absolutely. so rare he makes them. And yep. you would have sworn the outside horse had won. But uh, good on him for having a sense of humour about it. And yeah, good on Nigel for, for taking it uh, taking it in his stride as well. But he's got, got some nice young horses. Not, not young, I should say. Um, but three year olds. Lower yep. grade horses around him. Yep. Well, I can't stand How old would Bronte be? Bronte McNamara. Uh, she's close to going school. I reckon she might be four. Could be wrong there, Katie. Apologies if I am, yeah. but she's close. One Will's the, gone uh, to school and one of the she's great not things, far behind. One of the great things I love about racing is is seeing kids go into the stables and stuff. It's just, it's yeah. awesome. It's she's good, a delight, Good for Bronte. the kids and it's good for the horses. Yeah, exactly. Let's go across the Tasman. We showed you last yeah. week a major Trojan leading into the WA Derby. He's in those bright colours that Michael talked about last week and he gets up to win, but the crucial part was early on in the race, wasn't it? Yeah, look, really strongly run race as they tend to be. God, he's a great driver, Gary Hall Jr. Sometimes I can leave or take WA harness racing for the class of the horses because I think that sometimes they get overhyped, but there's no overhype in Gary Hall Jr. He is an outstanding horseman. He would be an outstanding horseman anywhere in the world. 
He's won uh, four from ten now, but uh, he might not have ended up in the spot that he did if things hadn't have unfolded that way early on. Sheree Tomlinson joined a rather uh, illustrious group of 100 win club, if you like, in the junior drivers' ranks, certainly in the females, and uh, congratulations to her on Hurricane Banner. Yeah, and if you were a tourism New Zealand, you wouldn't be showing races from Addington or Forbury Park last week, would you? Look at the mess that is there. It was really wet, really slushy, but typical Cherie didn't come back. She was smiling straight after the race. She's exactly the same all the time. That's one of the strengths of her is her enthusiasm, and she's a really talented horse person. And uh, yeah, she'll be around for a long, long she time. She won the next night with Smoke and Mirrors, so she's bang straight back so into the... what about the list? So, so you, I, I have no idea how you even found the time to do this. You compiled a list of junior drivers who have had 100 wins in their career. Yeah, and my apologies if I've missed anyone off, but I just went through it year to year to year, and that's some list there, isn't it? Now, the most significant part there is the Peter Ferguson, David Butcher, Tony Hurley, Anthony Butt, that era. It was extremely difficult to be able to do that. Uh, Mark Jones became the first junior to drive 100 in a season, and obviously Dexter changed the bar completely by winning a premiership as a junior and driving 220, I think, as a junior driver. But that's some list, isn't it? Well, M Mitchell Kerr surprises me. I, I don't remember Mitchell driving that much. I think you think he's a really good young trainer. But I don't. Rem I know he drove for Gareth Dixon for a while, but I don't remember him driving yeah, that much. Over, you've got to also remember that they used to have a limit that you could only drive 50 winners. It's, it's and then they had an extension of um, at minimum of four years and yeah. things have changed a it's little a bit. List. There's not so many numbers now coming through, so they need to encourage Harness Race New Zealand, the juniors, to stay part of the system. So, yeah, things have changed a wee bit, but it's pretty cool. List. I think that leaderboard or that recognition board should go up at Addington. Okay. Because when you go to Lords and you have everybody who's had a century at Lords or taken a fiver, and we've said this before, all the premiers, there should be somewhere where these things are viewed. There's no point having them on a computer. They should have a leaders, well, Addington's the home of harness racing. They should have everybody who's won the trainer's premiership, everybody who's won the driver's premiership, and something like that, more so than a junior driver's premiership. Because there you go. we should have places where people can go and aspire and think, wow, that was my uncle or my granddad or, or my auntie these days, or my grandma. I think we should have a leaders board and somebody out there should sponsor it. Tom Cool Kelly should do it. He's got some more money. <laughs> yes. Uh, just on Shreya, of course, Lulu Le Mans uh, won uh, over the weekend in Australia and races in the size heat on Friday week, yeah. night. So, so coming um, here basically to race through to the size that's, station. And get that's the jewels. plan there. Uh, Robbie Close, he registered win number one. And he's on the 100 list too. Yeah. And this was his uh, first training success with Majestic Mannequin, a horse he bought at the sales. Uh, Mum and Dad, Michael and Shelley are involved and his partner, Brooke McCarty, as well. Didn't just win, just did set, bolted in. Style and Majestic Mannequin is out by five lengths on Champagne Prince and Folly Trouble, and Majestic Mannequin has bolted in. Won it by. So he's been patient with his horse, uh, bought it as a cheap purchase out of the Auckland sale it was, and on that performance it can win again at short notice. You've got another a neat wee piece for us too, Michael, uh, with Manawa 2 being run earlier in the week, Ben Butcher back in the bike. Yeah, and so Ben had that horrific accident at Alexandra Park back in December, came back to driving last Friday, mm. Alexandra Park. Yesterday goes to Manawa 2 and gets his first win back since the incident. But he has been winning, but not winning, because he's got a dead heat with, of all things, his brother Zach. So that in itself is incredibly rare. The brother's dead heating. Both horses trained by their dad. Now, the Whig sisters, who are twins, which is even weirder, dead heated in an amateur driver's race. But here's two tote drivers and um, the significance of them both being trained by David, and of course the fact that it's Ben's first win back after that broken clavicle. Well, well done to you, Ben, well done to Zach, and I think they got a real thrill out of that. Um, typical butcher boys, they didn't know they had dead heated until afterwards. Ben went back to the stables, Zach saluted, and then when they were ungearing, they found out they had dead heated. That nah, pretty much sums them up. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? All right, short break for us here on uh, your box seat. When we come back, we'll wrap up uh, in the home straight, your show. He created a man who became a monster.
What have we got around this nation for you, Harness Racing Wise? Nine races, five twenty-three, twenty-five thousand dollars fast track insurance pick six there Thursday evening. Adding to Raceway Day meeting. Don't forget this. Ten races, rugby's on. Crusaders are playing the Highlanders. Twelve oh five the start time. We've got a sire stakes heat there. Number four, twenty-two thousand dollars there. As is the case up at Alexandra Park. Heat number three. It is nine twenty the start time there. The pick six Friday night is at the park. Three minutes to six the start time for that. Winton have a very good program there on Saturday. 11.40 the start of the 11 races including those features for you and Rangiora Sunday 12.07 it is the Group 3 Classic $30,000 along with the Rangiora 3 year old stakes and the bonus Quaddy starting earlier in the day which will be race number 2 uh, remember these two classics has been 16 Rangiora Classics here's 2016 Lockerburn in front Chris Amie gets to his outside and they win about 36.5, which back then equaled the New Zealand record. Yeah, it's a very fast track. Rangiura won by some wonderful horses, the classic there. And God, he's a great old horse, Chris Amie. He, he's sort of been forgotten in the annals of great horses, but still doing his business in the States now and won a miracle mile. And, and he was actually fresh up for this race and, and it was a, a really good performance. performance. Um, this was quite a good field. Classy Brigade got home in a quicker time, Michael. Gets his go. Classy Brigade was a really good staying type of horse. And get yeah, this Franco Nelson running through, isn't it? Back yep. One of those, uh, one of the good horses from the Dunbar. I think it was Franco Nelson before he headed to Menangle. But it's been a really good horse's race, and it's going to be this week too. AG's White Sox, the Fixer, Chase Auckland is back. This is what we presume to be the field because the nominations. Uh, look, I'll be honest, these clubs who race on Sunday and don't have their fields open by lunchtime on, on Wednesday. A Wednesday yeah. Yeah, what's the point of it? I've said it a few times. It's been it's, it's a Actually, battle. Actually, Lopez is there. Um, Hale Christian's hey, going Mombe, well. Mombay, Markula are there. They feel it should be out. Yeah. Let's be fair. Yeah, Mombay and Markula in the trot. Um, hopefully they both turn up, and hopefully they both turn up in if, Auckland. If you're wondering where Chase Auckland's at, let's have a look at his most recent workout to put your mind at ease. Um, he goes to this race Sunday, of course, and then heads north. But uh, yeah, he come back from uh, Sydney in, in wonderful order, and he was very comfortable here. Yeah, and most importantly, he needs to start winning some races to get into the jewels he's actually not listed in the jewels market or oh, I think you can probably ring the bookies and ask them to put him in if you feel like having a bet that's what somebody did with you may collect this week they rang up and said can you chuck him in the market and they did yep $21 of course to win uh, the New Zealand Cup and he's only had the spin around three times at would this stage look at him finding the line there. would it be stunned if Chase Auckland won the jewels I wouldn't be stunned if the four-year-olds, a couple of them, didn't turn up and he turned up in $1.50. But you can't bet on them right now, so if you want to, give them a call. I mentioned that Winton meeting uh, that gets underway at 20 minutes to 12 on Saturday. They've got a couple of really good races. Uh, the Businesses Cup there is a, a deep sort of a race. What about the Woodlands runners that we do have? Uh, Lulu Le Mans, I mentioned before, of uh, Mark Jones's Triple Eights there. And Sweet On Me goes to that heat at Addington Raceway. Triple Eight was really good last Last week, um, so he, he's turning into a nice horse, and, and sweet on me. Well, she's going to be everybody's multi horse for the jewels. I think she opened about about a dollar thirty. Um, interesting. We had a Kiwi Melbourne Cup like performance in our tipping competition <laughs> yes, we on did. the last day, and it was the worst tipping competition in history because we were all abysmal, and basically almost nobody won. Um, but Mark Summich, who is New Zealand's top ever real estate auctioneer, he's won it that many times. I don't let him enter it anymore. Uh, was last, and a clear last, and an embarrassing last going into the last day. Had a hundred a win on Puma Road, and it's got up, and he's gone last to first Greg, and in fact he's bolted. He's just gone he's won by past five. us, but let's go back to the start of the competition, oh. and remember this. Hmm. I was worried that some smart-ass farmer from Southland who had like <laughs> 10,000 hectares was going to get me to try and mow his lawn, and... Being a man Some might work. get you to yeah. mow that with a pair of scissors. But. Well, I could probably mow that with a pair of scissors. Um, so, well, so I did who, offer you the right who, one. I won't who be are our... for that. Now there's Sammy's lawn. Um, the scissors, I'm not too sure, will come out. Um, does he have a hand mower or does he have a... Well, I don't know the answer to this. That, that isn't the bad part. So I'm, unbelievably, I'm, I'm actually friends with Mark Summits. That's not how he got in the competition. He just <laughs> entered, and ended up randomly in the competition. Uh, Linda Van Beek also beat me, but Linda, Mark wins. So I'm not coming to mow your lawn, but well done <laughs> on your efforts in the competition. Um, so Mark doesn't live too far from me, but the problem's going to be, and look at this abysmal result here for most <laughs> of us. It's embarrassing. But um, Mark is one of the few people in the world who has a bigger mouth than me. 
So he will berate me why I mow his lawn. So we're going to get some footage of me being berated and mowing a lawn at some stage in the next couple of weeks. Is that possible? Weeks. Someone... <laughs> it's true. Right Most people watching the show won't believe that, Marshall. But you know what makes me feel better? I beat Mark McNamara. Well, that that's just right. makes me feel Matthew better. Cross, who will be on the show next week, got you by 25. As will Peter Pinger. Jensen. So, so next week on the yep. show, because I'm not here, and that's good news for everybody. Um, Next week, you're going to have a really in-depth talk to Peter Jensen, the new boss of Harness Racing New Zealand, about lots of Harness Racing Yeah, stuff. covering several topics. Um, the main one will be the MAC involvement in the Masara report and where do Harness Racing New Zealand see it and, and where's our position on it because we have been quite quiet in that regard where yeah. the thoroughbreds have had a bit more to say and of course it's been part of the weigh-in program as well so we'll talk to them about that and a whole lot of other topics. Standing starts, yep. handicapping. All of those things. Um, where we're going in yep. the game. So the the well, funding for next year, all Peter that sort of stuff. Peter seems a no-nonsense sort of guy. I haven't had a lot to do with him but when I've spoken to him he doesn't do what some racing administrators do and that's just talk gobbledygook. There's nothing worse than you ask someone a question or they start talking about this process and that process because the people in racing tend to be people who like simple language. They don't want to hear all this KPI nonsense. And that's where Peter's pretty good because I think so often we confuse the people in racing by not telling them what we really think and just adding a whole lot of junk words to it. And they're upgrading their website from the 1st of May. Yeah, Harness so Racing New Zealand. I'm gonna, really yeah, Harness Racing really New Zealand. Important. So I'm going to ask them about that and um, some of the features. If the like, There's not going to be a lot of change there because, it, let's face it, is as good as anywhere in the world and has won that title several times. Uh, don't forget about the Harness Jewels dinner that you and I will be hosting on the Thursday night leading into that and the golf tournament on the Friday. Now there are still a few spots available if you want to get involved in that. Um, go to addington.co.nz, all the details are there and even the golf tournament's now on Harness Racing New Zealand site. So uh, it's a whole lot of fun and, and I'm sure if you get along to that you, you'll be able to enjoy yourself with like-minded people. Yeah, and w well done to the bookmakers. It's, it's no small effort opening the jewels market, so I'm glad you did. And it, it means there's a narrow story when this horse wins, does it go to the jewels? and that sort of stuff. It's, it's free promotion for the jewels, but there are some horses who maybe should be in there which aren't in there um, because obviously it's top 15 only, so you can ask for those horses to be put in. And there is some, some, some nice odds there, but it's question's going to be who is going to turn up. The biggest of those questions, Gregory, ultimate sniper. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for your input tonight. Enjoy your uh, break. Will. And um, we'll see you in a week's time with Matt Cross and, of course, that interview with Peter Jensen. That's been your box seat. Enjoy your harness racing week ahead.